Welcome back, everyone, with the Week Tours Tech Talk here at the SG Tours Company. I'm your host, Matt LePan, joined once again by one of our great technical support representatives, Ken Gott. Ken, thanks for coming on the podcast today. Thanks for having me, Matt. What we're going to be discussing today is internet connectivity setup and troubleshooting with Mitsubishi Kumo Cloud and Kumo Station. And for anyone out there who installs Mitsubishi, you know that if you're in Massachusetts, that these are essential to getting your mass save rebates and you can double triple quadruple your rebate if you're installing these it's huge to know how to set them up and ken you've been out on the job site with some of our dealers who are installing kumo cloud kumo station with their mitsubishi equipment can you talk about some of the issues that you've seen here and how we can avoid them and how we can get this set up correctly sure i think one of the most important thing is preparing the wi-fi network before we even get started one thing that you need to realize is the kumo cloud only works on 2.4 gigahertz networks most homes have both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz most of these networks have the same password which creates a huge problem we learned this from being out on the job ourselves what happens is you set this up through your phone app on your iPhone or your whatever your device is, and the phone has to be logged on to the 2.4 gigahertz network. You cannot let the phone jump to the 5 gigahertz. Most phones will try to do that because the 5 gigahertz network is a faster signal, but it doesn't travel quite as far. The 2.4 gigahertz network will travel further, a little slower, but it's fine for the Kumo cloud to work on. One of the things that will save you a lot of time is to have the homeowner make sure he sets up his password differently for the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. What we've run into in the past is the technician will log on to the 2.4 gigahertz network. If he had logged on to the 5 gigahertz at any time, the phone wants to always jump to the fastest network. We've been in the middle of a setup. We thought we were on the 2.4 gigahertz. Things weren't connecting, and we found out the phone had jumped to the 5 gigahertz network. What you have to do in this case is you have to go in and you have to tell your phone to forget that network and only connect to the 2.4. Another thing that is very important is your internet service provider. What are they providing for a Wi-Fi router? Some of the latest routers create what we call the mesh type network. This can be extended with What you should do is contact the customer service provider. A mesh router is the best router to use. The service providers can supply you with pods that plug into wall outlets to extend this network. This is usually the best way to go. That way, passwords and Wi-Fi names all remain the same. When you use inexpensive Wi-Fi extenders, very often the network name is different with different passwords. It makes it very confusing when you're doing the setup. Another thing, too, is to be very careful of the strength of the network throughout the house. If you have refrigerators, metal walls, cement walls, this can all interfere with the signal. You really cannot go by the bars on your phone. When testing the Wi-Fi signal throughout the house, it's really not accurate to use your phone. Yeah, that's right. And you can look like you have bars in a certain part of your house, but you know that when you go to that part of the house your phone doesn't connect quite as quickly. The typical look at it is if you're, say, watching a movie on your phone and you move into a different room, you have the same amount of bars, but all of a sudden it's buffering, it's taking longer. You really need that true strong signal to connect to Kumo Cloud to make sure that everything is working correctly and communicating correctly. Yeah, that's correct, Matt. And also, when you get into the Kumo station, which works in conjunction with the Kumo Cloud, most of these Kumo stations are located in a basement. Sometimes they're mounted on the side of a metal boiler, which all interferes with signal. A lot of times we have to put these pods or Wi-Fi extenders in the basement to get the signal down into that area where it's strong enough to be able to communicate. Yeah, and just imagine trying to use your phone in the basement versus using it up in, you know, on your second floor bedroom or how far away that is. The Wi-Fi just needs to be extended to get that true strong signal that you're going to need in order to connect all these things together. Exactly, Matt. And, you know, none of us are IT guys, but, you know, these are things to be wary of when you go out on the job. What should take a couple of hours to set up took us all day out on a job because of the homeowner's Wi-Fi signal 
throughout the house. And that's why we're here talking about this on Taurus Tech Talk is we want to make sure that you're doing the work ahead of time to make sure that the internet is set up correctly rather than being stuck on a job all day because that's going to eat up your time and that's also going to, it could frustrate a homeowner. You know, if you tell them it's going to take a couple hours to set up and you're there for the entire day, it can lead to some frustration and not only for the homeowner, but for yourself. If you think you're only going to be in a house for two, three, four hours and you're there for eight, 10, 12 because you're running out to the store to get mesh extenders or you're running back and forth because you have to call the internet service provider to change the passwords on the different frequencies. These are all things that you can avoid by preparing ahead of time. And if you know this ahead of time, you're able to prepare. If you don't, you're going to be on the job scratching your head and Like we said, Ken's been on the job. He's been on with multiple people working on Kumo Cloud, Kumo Station. That's how he knows these issues. And we want to make sure that we're communicating that out to you. This is also something that the homeowner has to get involved with because you can't get into his router and change passwords. This could all be done ahead of time before you even go out to the job site to make your job go a lot smoother. Great. Well, thank you, Ken. And again, this is so important to know, not only just saving yourself time in the long run by calling the person who you're going to be installing this in their house to make sure everything's set up. Again, this is so important because Kumo Cloud and Kumo Station are getting you these rebates. You want to make sure that everything goes smoothly and that you're able to do this quickly and efficiently. We're going to get more into Kumo Cloud and Kumo Station with Ken. We're going to talk about the actual physical setup of it, the benefits of it. We're going to talk with some folks from Mitsubishi Electric, cooling and heating on the innovation of the Kumo Cloud Kumo Station, why it's their preferred choice for connected controls, and all of that. So there's a lot more to come on Kumo Cloud and Kumo Station. But before you even get into the house, before you even order it, you should know this internet connectivity issue. Make sure you're connecting to the right network. Make sure that you're not taking all day to get this set up on a job site. We want to thank Ken again for coming on, talking about this internet connectivity issue. As always, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and Spotify. Search Taurus Tech Talk. You can find us on TuneIn Radio. Again, search Taurus Tech Talk. Follow along on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We've seen the hashtags out there using Taurus Tech Talk. Got some great ideas from our dealers out there. Keep those coming. And you can listen online at any time. All of our podcasts are right on our website, sgtaurus.com backslash podcast. I want to thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Taurus Tech Talk. <laughs>